Hello, this is Ms. DB, and in this video we are going to talk about how to do some of the problems in the Chapter 10, Section 7 worksheet on volumes of pyramids and cones. So the volume of a pyramid is found by taking the area of the base, big B, times the height. The height is the height of the pyramid, not the slant height of one of the sides of the pyramid. So if it's a... Um, a pyramid that's going straight up like this, a right one, then the, the height would be measured from the center of the base up to the vertex of the pyramid. If it is an oblique pyramid like this, the volume is the same, but the height then is measured at a right angle to the base. So to find the volume of a pyramid, you find the area of the base and then you multiply it by the height. The bases will be different shapes, so you need to know how to find the area of every shape, which again, you we did this in chapter 9. So in this one, um, in example A, it's a rectangular pyramid, so to find the area of the base, you multiply the length times the width, and then you multiply by the height, and then you multiply that answer by one-third, which is the same as dividing by three. So don't forget that you have to take one-third times the area of the base times the height, otherwise you'd have the prism. Um, there's some discussion in the longer lesson video and in the book about how the volume from three of these pyramids would fit into one prism with the same dimensions. And you can actually, if you, if you have the objects, you could actually measure that by pouring water or rice. Three of these would equal one prism as far as volume goes. And then there's a square pyramid example as well. So in your example, in your problems to do numbers one, two, and three, you just have to find the area of the base, times it by the height, and then take one third. The only one that might give you a little trouble is number three. If you look at number three, the area of the base would be a triangle. So when you find big B, you will be taking why can't I use my pen tool here? You will be taking the area of the triangle, which is one half, the base of that triangle times the height of the triangle. This is how you find big B. So that would be one half. The base of this triangle is eight. The height of this triangle is three. So that's how you find big B in the formula of one-third area of the base times the height. The height of the pyramid is eight, is five. So it's a little confusing. Let me call this pyramid, height of the pyramid, and this one is the height of the triangle. So there's two different heights in this. This is the height of the pyramid. Uh, sorry, this is the height of the triangle. This is the height of the pyramid. So be careful on that one. Then we talk about volumes of cones. It's almost the exact same. It is the exact same formula, except the way that you'll find the area of capital B, which is area of the base, will be a circle. So you can use this formula because we know that the area of the circle is always pi times r squared. So you can just go ahead and use this one. And the radius will be from the center of the circle to the edge. The height is given by from the center of the circle to the top or at right angles if it's an oblique cone, if it's been tilted. Here we have some example, an example problem with the uh, volume of the cone here. Not sure why this got offset here. But the this picture goes with this example here. Radius is five centimeters. The height is 12 centimeters. To find the volume of a cone, you find the area of the circle, pi r squared, and then you multiply it by the height. For your problems here, these are all quite straightforward. You have the radiuses given to you in each of them, as well as the height of the cone. In 6, the height of the cone is 15. You don't have to do anything. It's just that it's an oblique cone. Now, there is sometimes where you are not given the height of the cone. You can't use the slant height in the formula. So sometimes you have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. 
Like in this example C, they gave us the slant height instead of the height of the cone. So they used the Pythagorean theorem 7 squared plus h squared, which is what we're looking for, will equal 25 squared. And then they subtracted um, 7 squared from both sides and simplified. And then they took the square root of both sides. So you may need to do that. In fact, you will need to do that in number 7. So in number 7, we don't yet know the height of the cone, which would go from the center of the circle that is the base all the way to the vertex of the cone. So we need to know this. So the first step will be to use the Pythagorean theorem. And Pythagorean theorem is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what part are we looking for? Let's see. We know one of the legs, this is the right angle here, one of the legs will be 28 squared. The other leg is the height, which we are looking for. But we do know the hypotenuse is 100 squared. So then you can square the 28 and square the 100. These are really pretty big numbers. And then subtract whatever this is from whatever this is, and then keep simplifying. Don't forget to take the square root at the end. That will give you the height. And then you can find the volume using the formula of the air, one third, the area of the base, which will be pi times the radius squared. We could already find that part times the height, which you will have found by using the Pythagorean theorem in your first step. Here's an example about exploring the effects on volume when you multiply all of the dimensions by one fourth. So here's your original volume. They took one third times area of the base would be 24 times 20. The height of this pyramid was 20. So they got a volume of 3,200 cubic feet. Then they multiplied all of these dimensions by a fourth, which is the same as dividing by four. And they found that the new volume was 50 cubic feet. And we can find the change in the dimension by dividing 50 divided by 3,200. And we'll see that it's 1 64th as big. Well, that's the same as this amount cubed. So you need to write like a sentence. You need to say something like the volume is multiplied by and then say what it's been multiplied by. Now, if you use the rule, which we've already talked about before with volume, if you use the rule that if you change the dimensions of a figure by x, then the volume will change by that amount cubed, then you don't actually have to find the volume for these problems. So for 8 and 9, actually there's 8, 9, and 10 are all asking the same thing. They give you what the dimensions are multiplied by. You need to say how much the volume will be changed by. If you, want to tr if you want to find the volume of the original and then multiply all the dimensions by two-thirds and then find the volume of the new and divide them, you can. Or you can use the rule that we've talked about a few times here and just finish this statement, how the volume will be changed. Number 11 is a little bit different. It says the volume of a pyramid is 10 meters cubed. Then all the dimensions are multiplied by 4. What is the new volume? So they're not telling us what the old dimensions were. We don't have a picture. You need to use the rule and figure out if all the dimensions are multiplied by 4, how will the volume change, and then find the new volume. And then we have some problems with composite figure. The volume of composite figures, you just need to find the volume of each part that makes up that figure and then add them together. Or look at number 14. Sometimes you actually are going to subtract. To find this figure's volume, it's, let me shade that in a little bit better. What they're really looking for is the volume of the cylinder with the cone cut into it. So they're looking for the volume of the cylinder minus the cone. So that one's a little bit different. You subtract to find the overall volume. But the rest of them, you just find the volume of both pieces, add them together, and then you'll get the volume of the composite figure. There's a bonus question involving a regular pentagon, a pentagonal pyramid. So do that one. If you do that, make sure you show your work on how you found your apothem to find the area of the pentagon and so on. 
All right, if you have any questions, come to my office hours or come to the ASC room when I am there, and I'll be happy to help you out or send me an email with your questions. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful day.